Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, October 21st, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today I'm going to discuss a very concerning topic, and that is how to deal with buyers who threaten you through eBay messages. This wasn't exactly the topic I had planned for this week, but it's something that came up and I think we need to discuss it because it could very well happen to you. We're also going to discuss your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video and some other good eBay topics. So let's get right into it with your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. Truman Hare wrote, Hello, Joe. Promoted listing rules, from what I understand, are, number one, there is a seven-day period before the new promoted listing percentage will apply to your items. This time period applies when you bulk edit your items in your store. Number two, you can end the listing and edit the promoted listing. Then the new promoted listing will be applied to the items when you relist the item. Number three, if you end the promoted percentage in bulk editing, it will end in a two-day time period. Please correct me if I have it incorrect. Thank you for your videos. I have learned a lot. <clears throat> this is an interesting question, and I'm a bit stymied. I always thought that the moment I change my percentage in promoted listings, it would automatically take effect. Meaning last week I told you I was promoting everything at 2% and I told you guys I was gonna run an experiment at 4%. So when I then edited everything at 4%, I was under the impression that all my listings were reflecting a 4% bid. But according to what Truman said, that is not the case. <clears throat> Do any of you guys have any definitive answers on this topic? If so, please put them in the comment section below. Dennis Copper wrote, This is what happened yesterday on eBay. A bad buyer left neutral feedback. Normally I would walk away, however they said they loved the item, but the cost was expensive. I contacted eBay. eBay at first said they wanted me to start reaching out to the buyer to turn it into a positive. All of you know I don't bend over. That's not even an option. I replied back to eBay stating the obvious with my wisdom. The bad buyer loves the item. They can't complain about a price they agreed to. I let eBay know in the past and it's always removed negative or neutral feedback in this type of case. eBay relented seeing as it had no other options available and was left stunned like when David slung a stone at Goliath, killing him. It removed the neutral faster than a cat jumps out of cold water in the wintertime. Okay. Daniel Copper brought up a couple of points I want to touch on really quick. Number one, if a buyer leaves me bad feedback, whether it's neutral or negative, I never, ever, ever, reach out to the bad buyer. I do what Dennis did. I go directly to eBay and I state my case. And thankfully, knock wood, I have very good luck like that because I am methodical in my descriptions. Dennis also brought up the point that his bad buyer loved the item but didn't like the price. Listen to me, guys. No eBay buyer is allowed to leave bad feedback complaining about the price of your item or the shipping cost because they are agreeing to those prices going in. They're forming a binding contract with you. They are not allowed to leave you negative feedback about your price or your shipping. If they ever do, please, for Christ's sake, do what Dennis did, contact them and get it removed. Mark Lowe wrote, Hi, Joe. Always enjoy your candor and approach. Question regarding not as described items. 
I have a very expensive item and have been anxious, thinking about the sale. What safeguards can one take to try and forget to talk? Oh, excuse me. Oof. What safeguards can one take to try and protect against someone saying it's not as described and returning a different item to you? I have no problem with a return in the same condition because I have 30 day returns where the buyer pays. But I'm very afraid of someone receiving this item and as part of a scam, substituting an entirely different item for return, claiming not as described. Other than only selling to buyers with lots of great feedback, do you have any suggestions for anything we can do that will convince eBay that we actually delivered what we said we would and be able to retain our purchase money? Nervous about losing the item and the money. Thanks, Mark. Mark, very good question and very interesting. Sadly, there are scammers out there on eBay, Amazon, and all e-commerce sites. But thankfully, there's way more good people than bad. Now, what can you do to protect yourself? What I would do, number one, is I would not use the auction format. Because at the last minute, a bad buyer could snipe your item, win the item, and then who knows what's going to happen after that. I would use the best offer feature and not accept any offers. For instance, let's say your item is $1,000, all right? I would have best offer enabled, but even if the guy offers $999, do not automatically accept it. Click on the feedback next to his name and look and see who you're dealing with, all right? If it's a zero feedback, I would not accept the best offer. Please, for God's sakes, don't do it. I'll tell you why. If a zero feedback offers you $999, that, if anything, is a warning sign, all right? He could easily offer you the full $1,000, so why isn't he doing that? Check and vet every account, okay? I, I must have checked 50 accounts this week for best offers, and I saw some pretty interesting comments. And I'm thankful to my fellow eBay sellers who left what we call reverse positive comments, saying things like buyer never paid or buyer filed an item not as described case. I'm seeing more and more of that. All right. Please always check who's sending you the best offer and what their track record is. But Mark, there's really no foolproof way to stop scammers. There really isn't. Ed Bay wrote, Joe, I think one of your crazy customers found me. I have an item listed for $27.50, and that includes free shipping. It's a buy it now item without the option to make an offer. I received a message stating, would you accept $10? I wisely followed your advice with no response and an immediate block. Then I went to check the person's feedback. They had several positives with negative comments. That's a reverse positive, what I just referred to. The biggest complaint that you always talk about, the potential buyer would not pay for offers made and accepted. Then I took a look at feedback left for others and found only one, but of course it was a negative. I'm so happy I did not waste any time on this deadbeat. I hope eBay never comes up with a bright idea that you wouldn't be able to block buyers. That is one of their greatest features compared to Amazon. You are so right, sir. The block list is an indispensable tool. I love it. I love it. I'm going to look you in the eye, and you're not going to believe this. In fact, I, maybe I shouldn't even say it, but I will. I block people almost every single day. Every single day. I think I blocked four today alone. One guy threatened me. I'll get to that in a minute. One guy refused to pay for an item. I haven't had this one in a while, but a guy sent me a best offer three or four days ago. I accepted the offer. First two days go by, I hear nothing. Yesterday he writes to me and he says to me, I don't remember 
sending you an offer on this item. Is this for real? What kind of an adult would say, I don't recall sending you an offer on this item. Is this for real? I simply wrote back, what do you think? And I blocked him. I'm not going to see any money from this guy. There are just so freaking many deadbeats because they know they can get away with it. Let me continue on. I don't want to get off too much on any one tangent. Mercedes Lux wrote, ha, ha, ha. Now that's entertainment. I'm referring to the lady you told us about. I cannot wait to find out the ending to that transaction. Is she or isn't she going to file that case? One thing is sure, she will get to know cute Joe. She will get to know cute Joey and how he rolls. Why does eBay rubber stamp buyers like that guy you told us about? Giving him the refund on the shipping costs to and from makes me think that eBay is so hard to keep buyers they will not stand their ground when the transaction is truly the buyer's fault for not doing their due diligence. Checking a listing before making the purchase, many never bother to read the description. Mercedes Lux and everyone else, a quick update to that particular case that I told you about last week. The buyer did, in fact, open a case against me, stating item not as described. And I swear to Christ, did exactly what I said they were going to do. Loaded up, I think it's 10 pictures, 10 nonsense pictures of an item I've already seen because I sent it to them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's going to be a problem with this particular transaction, this particular return, more than you can ever believe, okay? All right, there are stupid people, and then there are off the charts stupid people. Not only did this person buy an item that is not designed for their vehicle, admitted it to me, broke the item, but as you know, since they filed an item not as described case, I have to pay for the shipping back. So of course that means I had to send them the label by default. Well, guess what? One of the pictures they took is a picture of a small flat rate box with my name on it and the buyer's name in the top left corner. I sent the item to this person first class because it's a lightweight item. Cost me about $7. What does this tell you? Does anybody know where I'm going with this? I believe the person in question is not going to use the label that I've provided for free but is going to take a small flat rate box to the post office and send it back to me, circumventing the eBay return system. And I'm fairly confident because one more thing, I enlarged the picture that they provided and it's an old man's writing. You know that unsteady scribbling that I've showed you so many times in the past? Well, that's what it is. When I saw that, then everything started to be a little more clearer to me. You may remember I told you last week how this person was hateful and said nasty and abusive things to me, and I couldn't understand why. Now I understand why. This has been an ongoing problem with me, and I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want any of you guys to hate on me and say Joe has a thing for old people. No. I'm saying Joe has been attacked by several old people over the last year and a half, and I've held up envelopes and paperwork to prove my point. I don't know why they're so mad and nasty, and it's always men, all right? That's what I'm dealing with right now, all right? He bought the wrong item. He's blaming me. I'll keep you advised, but I can tell you this. There's definitely going to be a deduction taken. All right, now two more things have happened that are very noteworthy. 
I have another false item that is described case opened against me. I'm telling you, this is the new thing to do. A person with zero feedback purchased a hub from me, well, several hubs from me the other day. She manually changed the quantity from one to three, gets the items, and files item that is described. In the comment section, she hangs herself. She writes, these are the wrong size for my car. I didn't realize that my Ford came with two different size wheels, 14 inch and 15 inch. The ones I bought from you are too small. I need the larger size. Now I'm basically paraphrasing what she wrote, but you get the idea. The fault was hers. I don't have a problem taking the return, but I have a big problem with the false item not as described case because now I have to pay the shipping back. I did not call eBay specifically for those two cases I just told you about. What I usually do is they're getting so common, I wait till I get three or four situations at one time, and I'll make one call, which is what I did. All right? The real reason I made the call is what happened next. Listen to this story. Because this is something that we talk about. It has to do with cancellations. And Dennis Copper and a few others have said many times that they get tons of cancellations. They never cancel and they never have a problem. I firmly believe that it has to do with the category you're selling in. People who sell in collectibles category never have a problem. Their buyers are Johnny on the spot. They pay right up. They come back for more. They don't hassle. They don't return. I love it. I mean, I wish I, I wish I had experience with those buyers, but I have the eBay Motors buyers. And I do understand that most people don't know anything about their car. And they're, I'm going to get more returns than most of you guys. But the hate, the nastiness, there's just no reason for it. So let me tell you what happened. I woke up yesterday, and the first thing I always do is check my phone to see how many sales came in overnight and how many best offers. So what I do is I answer the best offers, accept or decline, send out the invoices, then I begin printing my shipping labels. While that's happening, I take my phone, I put it on charge in the other room. Okay, so now I'm working specifically off my Mac right here. So I think I had three confirmed orders overnight. All right, I start working on them, printing out shipping labels, boxing. And in the middle of it, another order comes in, a fresh order. I believe it was for approximately $50 for the item and 30 shipping for a total of 80 bucks. Okay. That's okay. I'll knock this one off too at the same time. So instead of going on, I had completed order number one. I then jumped onto the fresh order because it appeared on the top of the screen there. And I printed out the label. I boxed it up. That's ready. That's outside. That's going. And then I had two more the last two that came in overnight. Everything's done, everything's packed, and ready to roll. And at the last minute, I notice a message from eBay. A buyer wants to cancel. What the heck? When did this come in? Apparently, it came in at some point while I was boxing the other orders. Now, what's good about eBay, and this is a huge positive thing, I think most of you know it, if you print the label, I'm just saying print the label, even if you haven't boxed it yet or haven't actually taken it to the post office, if you print the label and a person tries to file a cancellation, eBay will step in and block it for you because they can see you've already printed the label. Now, that's what happened in my case. 
I didn't have to decline the cancellation. eBay declined it for me. And of course, I didn't know it because it all happened. I had the phone, as I said, in the other room on mute because I always keep it on mute at night. So anyway, it's declined. Then the dancing starts. I start getting nag messages from this buyer. I don't want these. Cancel my order. I don't want this. Cancel my order. That's two. I wrote back to him, too late. The item has already been shipped. I then get one of the nastiest messages that I've had in as long as I can remember. I'm going to read it to you now. Then I'd like your opinion on it. And let me tell you something. The spelling is atrocious. The English is poor. I'm going to read it as best I can. Wow. How ghetto you are. I asked to cancel order MI. After I ordered them. And as you know, you haven't shipped anything to me yet, but I'm documenting everything, and I'll be notifying eBay and Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. I'll be notifying eBay and Amazon of you crookedness. I will be able to prove to eBay your lies. I hope this affects your selling anything through the use of eBay and Amazon. Good day. You know, I don't know why people are like this. I don't know how people could be like that. So when I read that, I knew I had to act. I said, now I've got three reasons to call eBay. I'll knock them all off. But of course, I wait till the afternoon to call eBay because you've got to figure you're calling the West Coast I don't want to call anybody first thing in the morning when they haven't had their coffee. I always wait out of respect till after 12 o'clock Eastern time, just out of sheer respect. All right. So I called up, got a nice concierge rep who called me back in 30 seconds. And I started off with the hater message that I just read to you. And I explained the situation. And he said, oh, my God, he said, that's absolutely no reason for that kind of thing. He goes, I want you to report the buyer. And he told me something that I thought was very weird. See what you think about this. He said to me, he said, I could report the buyer for you on my end right now. But it carries more weight if you report the buyer on your end right now, right from the transaction. Because you know there's a drop-down menu and one of the little links says report buyer. So that's what I did. I reported the buyer, explained the whole situation, and we'll see what happens with that. Then while I had the guy on the phone, I explained to him about the two false item not as described cases. And I made him look at both of them. And he said to me in both cases, Joe, you describe the items terrifically. You did nothing wrong. I can plainly see both these buyers are abusing the return system. I want you to report them and check on abuse returns and just tell your little story right then and there. Then when you get the items back, you should take a deduction for the return shipping, which of course you guys know I will. I will deduct the return shipping and the original shipping. Although usually the original shipping is toggled off in my case. I don't know if it is with you guys. You can let me know what you think about that. So in the comments section, I'm very interested, <coughs> excuse me, in your reaction to the hater, the guy that's gonna report me to eBay and Amazon. All right, <laughs> Amazon, yeah. I, I mean, why? Oh, I just got a new offer. A new offer has just come in now, live on the Crazy New York Driver Show and in color. 
I've had a lot of low ball offers this week. Now, I don't consider 50% a low ball offer. All right? If a guy offers me $50 on a $100 item, I'm not taking it, but I don't consider that a low ball offer. $30 is a low ball offer, and oh my God, this has been a, a real bad week with low ball offers. However, sales were very, very good this week. I am happy as can be. I'm very tempted to get up and do a dance right now, but I've really got no reason to, so I won't. But sales this week were excellent. Before we go any further, I'm just going to put this on pause so I can answer that best offer, if you don't mind. Okay, guys, I'm about to click accept offer. You're going to hear my iPhone go ka-ching. Are you ready? Here we go. I love it. I love it. I'm sending the buyer an invoice right now. And there it goes. Okay. Invoice has been sent. I had to put it on pause because I had to check his account. I don't want to get stuck with a non-payer. So, yeah. As I said, sales were very good. I have no complaints at all. I want to stress the point that I was trying to make about the people abusing the item not as described case with the return shipping and also the guy, the hater, the guy that threatened to notify eBay and Amazon. Please, guys, please, if you've ever listened to my advice in the past, listen to it again. Always report these people to eBay. It's very important, okay? I can't stress that enough for two reasons. Number one, if something bad comes of it, let's say a negative feedback, for instance, everything will be in black and white and they'll remove it for you. Number two, if they do it to enough sellers, eBay says they will remove the bad buyer. Now, the concierge rep I spoke to earlier today said, Joe, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that we remove bad buyers, like the guy who threatened me. He goes, but please believe me, if we get enough reports, we do, because my team is actually in charge of that. So it seems like I had a senior representative on the phone. I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, I'm hoping that eBay is cracking down on bad and abusive buyers. Ergo the title of this video. I will say there are some things I can tell you factually. And that's eBay will remove unfair, negative, and neutral feedback from abusive and bad buyers. It's happened to me, all right? Dennis Copper, he gave you an example earlier in the comments I read. I know there's going to be a few people who are going to say it, so I'm going to have to address this now. They're going to say, Joe, what you're saying is great. For those of you guys who have the Utah, the Utah call center or concierge in general, but what about those of us who are overseas with the Philippines call center? Well, I got to be honest, I, don't, I know your pain. And I put the time in with that call center early on in my eBay career. So, I mean, don't say cute Joey didn't put his dues in because cute Joey did. All right? My advice to you is keep at it. Keep at it. Report. Be a good seller. Things will get better. I'm going to just put this video on pause briefly because I want to get something that I want to show you, and then I'll bring the video to a close. Okay, last thing I want to talk about. I went to the supermarket today, and look what I bought. Oh, my God. I'm going to pour some right now in front of you on camera. 
and I'm going to have a drink. I love eggnog. This stuff is the elixir of life. I love it. I could drink it all day and night. I'm going to take another sip right now for your pleasure. That stuff is good. I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Every Friday night, I make these videos to try and help you stay successful as an eBay seller. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciated. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comment section, and I'll try and hit you up next week. Go out there, make a ton of money on eBay. Rock on and peace!